Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. As you can see, folks, I'm still, I still have my attire on. I still have my Vietnam hat on, whatever. And it's just a reminder to those vets out there who are in NOM and well, may, may even not in NOM that you should visit your VA and your, 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 your VA card, if you will, your GI card. Very important. You know, there are benefits that are sitting down there for you. So if you're homeless or you know someone who's homeless or someone who's, uh, who's having issues with mental, issue, mental health issues and things of that nature, hey, get them down to the VA. Get them down to the VA. And if you have a problem with that, you need any information, you can call me at 503-701-0457. That's what it's all about. Very important. Very, very important. Thanks for serving, too, by the way. Well, let's get on with the Oregon Voters Digest and our talk show today. And I would guess I think it will be very rich. As you note, uh, we're right in the midst, if you will, of a presidential campaign. And there are some major concerns with the public out there from the standpoint of who do you vote for? Are they talking about the issues? It's really a joke. And uh, you're going to be bombarded with all kinds of mailing and all kinds of things here very shortly. Many of you just don't even read the newspapers. You don't look at TV. You don't look at Fox. You don't look at CNN. You know, every, So it's a problem. So my whole format is going to be to educate you as much as possible and show how you can responsibly uh, react to this um, presidential campaign that we have. It's very, very important. And I'll say to you right up front that probably the major issue that, uh, that everyone is concerning, uh, they're concerned with is the whole issue about the, um, the, 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 the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court. That's the major, major issue. I want you to know that. And it comes in all kinds of marketing, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the Supreme Court is the major issue for both <coughs> sides, if you will. And uh, they've got two candidates, and all due respect, uh, they've got some major, major concerns with both candidates. And uh, you will be seeing more of that as we go along. But I want you to, I want you to know that it's, a, it's an issue. So as part of that so-called education and informing aspect of it, uh, there, are, there are third parties, like, for instance, normally we, you, you tend to identify yourself with the Republican Party or Democratic Party, but there are some very responsible third parties that are out there, folks who have, who have had to fight. They don't have the money. They may not have the money, but the fact of the matter is they're coming on. You've got some options here. You have some alternatives. That's what. And I'm talking to one, the two that are registered right now that, that t- tends to be most pronounced would be the Libertarian Party and the Pacific Green Party. They've got two viable candidates, a very sharp aspect of it. But the interesting thing about both of those candidates, one in Gary Johnson, who happens to be a former former governor of, of New Mexico, very interesting guy, very successful guy. Again, that was one guy. And then there's a, there's a Pacific Green Party person. That, what, what's her name? Jill Stein. Uh, what's her name? And Jill, well, Jill, Jill Stein is Jill the Green Stein. Party candidate. I've got her represented here. She's going to be in the second half of the show. But a very, very articulate lady. I mean, awesome, awesome person. So the whole idea here now is that there's going to be a major, like we normally do, the major debate is in September. The major debate is in September, and we'd like to see that there's a process, and we're going to talk about that process with my two guests. There's a process that will allow them to get into that debate during the September. And I think it would be good for, for all of us, for this country for that matter. you got, you got another woman, i.e. for the Hillary, and you've got a responsible person who has actually served in it as a governorship uh, of, of New Mexico in, in, as far as the system is concerned. So that's it. Now, let's go on with the show, and that's to start up with this whole piece. You'll recognize both of my guests here to my right or to your left, if you're looking on the screen. I've, I've got uh, Scott's... What is Scrimshaw? That? I'll just say Scott Ski. Scott Scrimshaw. <laughs> Ski. Is that okay? Actually, you can do that. Padre is what they called me in the, when I was in the Navy. That's good. A so, rose so. by any other name, right? As you, exactly know, as you know, they're very relaxed. You have to be relaxed in this business. Once you Absolutely. Start getting, once you start getting bombarding this stuff, I mean, I take he is, my... Scott is. He's the Perry Como of is, political is that right? I tell you, <laughs> that Perry Totally you know, relaxed. Better than the Lawrence yeah, Welk. As, yeah. you, as you see, they've already been... He was been, known for being relaxed. They've already been in politics, and you can see the reaction. So we have to tone them down a bit, but they're good. They're good people. Anyway, welcome, Scott. Welcome, thank you. you. And then we got Richard Burke. Richard, yep. how you doing? doing Libertarian well. Party of Oregon. That's right. That's right. Awesome guy. He's been around quite a bit. I've been I've been involved with him, and I mean he's got some interesting things. Got me more involved. I think it's very great, 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 fantastic. Welcome aboard, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. Hey, look, guys, let's start off with um, one. Uh, we got the candidate. Gary uh, Johnson. Gary Johnson. You want an update on the, campa- I'm on the campaign? Can, yeah, because you were here the other day. So mm-hmm. what's the update on that deal right now? Quite a, quite a few things, um, Bruce. I think, first of all, you mentioned a shout-out to the Vietnam vets. I'm a veteran myself, so I give a shout-out and a thanks for everybody's service. 
Um, there's much happening in the Gary Johnson campaign. We, the polling, we, as we discuss further into this show, we'll talk about the importance of polling and figures. But we are polling very high. There's a seven-point gain in the Latino community, mm. which is that's when you consider that in a two-month time, a seven-point gain is a very large growth. Mm. This is actually from the end of May or from mid-June, actually mid-June forward. So we've had seven-point gain. Donald Trump has had a four-point or over net five-point loss. Um, we see um, also in the Midwestern states, we're starting to pull up in the higher, depending on what polls you're looking at, in mm -hmm. the 15, 16th percentile. Utah, we're definitely up in the 16th percentile. So we're starting to see that we're coming in line with the 15 percent requirement of the, uh, the de Commission on de Presidential Debates. Now, whether or not... Um, where that looks like across the nation, we will see when they start doing their polling in September. Okay, okay. But right now, we're seeing phenomenal growth. We're seeing it here in Oregon, and we're seeing it across the country, depending on your particular demographic or the geographic location of these polls. And, and just to educate the viewing audience, this, this, let's spend a couple of minutes about polling. How, is that, how does that come about, the polling? Well, polling and is... Who can, and who can actually... Who gets called? Uh, who can, just polling is a very complicated field. Okay. Uh, a lot has to do with the sample that you take, how large is the sample, and what does the sample consist of. For example, you can poll registered voters, mm -hmm. or you can poll likely voters, people who typically vote. It's going to get you a different result. Are you going to have a large sample with a lower margin of error? Are you going to have a, you know, a larger one? Are you going to poll people who have mobile phones? Or people who have landlines, mm. you're going to blend them. Mm. They result in different things too. So mm. you can get different polls through different means, and mm. that's one of the things that makes it complicated when trying to prove that you've met the standards set by the Commission of Presidential Debates. Mm -hmm. You know, they're taking an average of polls. Well, what polls? What questions? Who included? What they notice is that if you ask Trump and Hillary, Hillary has a big lead. But if you include Stein and Johnson, it's almost dead even. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I keep hitting okay, on okay. your table. And then that. speaking of the polling, which is, you know. Who gets called? Well, as he said, you get landlines, you have cell phones, and that, of course, will give you a different result. Most people who have landlines are older people. Are people. these registered voters? Um, sometimes. Sometimes. Again. Sometimes not. Sometimes they're, they're just people who live in a community. Sometimes they are registered voters, but they only call likely voters. Oh, okay. People okay. who voted three or four of the last four mm -hmm. elections. Mm -hmm. And different polls use different methods so when you ask who gets called well it's a catch-22 yeah. because the same commission that sets sets the criteria for the polls is also the same commission that determines how they're going to frame the questions mm -hmm. and who what audience are going to go to mm -hmm. and none of that has been released to the public it's that is something that the democratic um, representative the commission on presidential debates is considered um, bipartisan in the fact that they have a former ch um, chairman for the R for the republican party sitting on their board you have the same thing with the democratic party they have a former chairman of their party sitting on the board and that these two the Republican and the Democrats will make the decision about these polls we well, have yeah. to imagine they already have a vested interest in not yeah. having a third party represent yeah. but here's this here's the interesting thing about it they have already said even even both Gary Johnson and Jill Stein mm -hmm. sued the commission that's correct to to be included and that lawsuit now, these are the presidential candidates that's right one from yep. the Green Party one from that's the, right and the these Interior. lawsuit the, this lawsuit has been dismissed however the Commission on Presidential Debates has said that they may relax the 15% requirement, and they have already instructed those news organizations hosting okay. debate venues okay. to prepare for a lecterns. debate with three lecterns. Three? Wait a minute. What, what, about, what about the Green Party? They should include four, but that's what, four. that's what they've said so far. Now, what's interesting about this, and, and I'm going to be quiet after sure, this, sure, but no this problem. is important. No, it's good. Yeah. There is a way, there is a scenario, a plausible scenario, okay. where Gary Johnson could win the presidency. Here's mm -hmm. how it works. The president is not elected by popular vote. Mm -hmm. That's right. He or she is elected by the Electoral College. Every state gets a number of electoral votes equal to the number of senators and representatives mm -hmm. that they have in Congress. Mm -hmm. To be elected, you must get a majority, 270 Electoral College mm -hmm. votes. If nobody gets a majority then the entire election is basically thrown out. It goes to the House of Representatives, and the House of Representatives selects the next president. Mm -hmm. Each state gets two votes, and they must choose between one of the top three vote-getters. Wow. Wow. So let's take a situation where Gary Johnson, for example, manages to get into the debates. And because of that, he rises and he wins a few states, just a few. Mm -hmm. Utah, to New Mexico, 
maybe one or two more. Get to 200 and similar. Neither Hillary Clinton or Trump gets 270 votes. Right. They're denied but, the electoral win. Then it goes to the House of Representatives. Now, in the House of Representatives, it could be that the Democrats know they don't have enough votes to get Hillary right, in. Right, right. But they don't want Trump. And there are some Republicans who maybe want Trump, but some of them might not want Trump. Okay. They could reach an agreement with the Democrats to go with Gary Johnson. Mm. And I'm going to actually... Interesting. Bruce, mm -hmm. I'm going to change... Now, what, what, about, what about the Green Party? I mean, can they get involved in the process? If then? they win some... They have to be one of the top three vote-getters to qualify for electoral so college. So, I mean, so, so they've got to be at, at... They have to be at that podium. Well, they have to be at that podium if they're to have a chance to do it. But if... What about they, a write-in? If, if it goes to the Secretary of... I mean, I'm sorry. If okay. the election goes to the House of Representatives... Right. Only the top three vote getters. The top three vote getters are the ones that can be voted for. Okay, so no write-ins and nothing like that. Yeah, it has to be of those three that are picked. That's that's my understanding. Okay, okay, yep. so we got to work on that other piece. Well, let's back. Mm -hmm. Let's walk it back just a little bit okay. because the I'm um, standing to be at the lectern. They have set a 15% cutoff. Now they're willing to. The, the rumor is, of course, what's okay. the factual behind it? It's mm -hmm. really what they end up doing. Right. But the rumor is, is that they're willing to look at the um, the favorability of these candidates or the 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 growth of these candidates and right. see that they will pose a, a credible right. um, candidacy okay. and then include them on the debate stage. Now, I understand, I absolutely agree with what Richard has said about the idea of this being thrown to the House of Representatives, mm -hmm. but my, actually how I would look at this and how the Gary Johnson campaign is looking at it, mm -hmm. if we get to the debate stage, all bets are off. Right. Anything it's, can happen. It's not just about preventing mm -hmm. the electoral vote win to the um, Democrat or Republican. Okay. Yeah. Anything could happen because suddenly now you're getting millions of America see, Americans seeing the caliber, the qu the quality of mm -hmm. the of the libertarian ticket, mm -hmm. and once that happens, all bets are off. Now it's getting to that debate stage, and this is where, when you asked about why only the three candidates, right. and, and Bruce uh, Richard responded, the fact that you know it's the top three tier. Um, I think well only in the House of Representatives. Right. So There's nothing to do right. with for the, the House of Representatives. Right, but it, with right, the right. debate commissions, the debate the Commission on Presidential Debates are looking right. at the way that they are polling. Um, I'm not sure. I can't speak specifically to where Jill Stein is polling right now, mm -hmm. but I know that her numbers are cry are, are yeah, rising, are climbing. It was nine percent last time I saw. Mm -hmm. um, I know that. And Twelve or fourteen. But again, no, that's actually poll? the libertarian. Which poll? That's the Libertarian Party is now polling almost consistently. CNN had them at twelve percent. CBS, I think, at a thirteen percent. It's it is a gradual increase incremental growth, the same thing with the Green Party. Mm -hmm. And so wh where we're coming at from the different aspects, yeah. one of the, the candidates that want to get on the debate stage, and then also for the overall discussion of the American um, of the American political situation, mm -hmm. this American mm -hmm. political scene, is that in this, this election and prior elections have been driven by a two-party narrative where contenders or challengers have been locked out of the process, even though technically they, they have an access and they can debate and they can discuss, but in the, the markets where it really matters, they don't have access. And while we are discussing, for example, whether or not a person voting should be required to have a, an ID, a birth certificate. Yeah, those are issues. So, those, are, those are the real issues. But no, yes, it's the real court. issue, but that's also subterfuge because while we're debating whether or not someone from Texas needs to have an ID card, what they're really doing is blocking access of non-Republican or non-democratic parties to even be at the uh, to be even on I the ballot right, yeah. so we're arguing whether or not someone needs to have it needs to have a, a, an id card to vote but while we're distracted over here what they're doing is saying like in ohio where they're making the rules so difficult to be able to get on the ballot mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter so we're just dis we're distracted with whether or not john or sally or susie should have a certificate or a card mm -hmm. the reality is <laughs> The Republican Party and the Democratic Party is making it extremely difficult mm -hmm. for third-party candidates to even get on the ballot. Yeah, it looks like in Ohio, Gary Johnson will have to be on the ballot as an independent, not as a libertarian. Mm -hmm. He'll be on the ballot. He'll be on the ballot, but as an independent. But, uh, you know, Oklahoma is infamous for having very tough ballot access mm -hmm. rules. Mm -hmm. um, Ohio, a lot of states do, and, and third parties have to fight battles Republicans and Democrats don't have to fight right. just to make sure that they and all the down ticket candidates are on the ballot as libertarians. And the same thing with the Green Party ballot access it's it's really interesting it's because the system is a two-party system mm -hmm. and it's geared towards keeping outsiders out. Mm -hmm. 
And so when you have, and so part of the Our American Initiative lawsuit was the fact that there was a monopoly. There is a monopoly that if you can't get into the presidential debates, you cannot compete mm -hmm. against this huge um, giant um, entity called the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. The duopoly is the phrase that people use. And so the whole goal is to open up the um, the presidential elections where. Here's a great example. The independents right now, the largest voting block when people are registering to vote. The largest... You mean non-affiliated? Unaffiliated. Actually, the independent... As, to be oppo as opposed to the independent party. Most yeah. people are registering as independents. Not independent You're talking party. nationally? Nationally. The, the red, people okay. voting now, the biggest demographic, 50% of all people registering to vote right now are registering as, as independent. independent. And that creates confusion, too, because yeah. in, in, in many states, if you check off independent, yeah. you're considered a non-affiliated voter. Mm -hmm. But in Oregon, there's actually an independent party. If a lot of people select that thinking they're being non-affiliated, yeah, right, right. but they're actually right. joining the independent party, and there's a separate box for uh, non-affiliated uh, in Oregon. Uh, so it varies from state yes, to exactly. state. Exactly. But but the point Scott's trying to make is valid that um, nationally the Republican and the Democratic parties are both shrinking. Third parties are rising in numbers, mm -hmm. and non-affiliate the, the block of non-affiliated right, voters right. is increasing. It's in huge. Ah. And as, so the Gary Johnson, you know, Gary Johnson has said repeatedly on national television as well as Bill Weld, where is the representation of that law? If the Republican Party is shrinking, if the Democratic Party is shrinking, um, where's the representation of this huge broad middle, yeah. what I call the radical middle, because it's really, yeah. it's these ideas of common sense, right, yeah. right wing thinking, common sense, left wing thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about the 60s and the Democrats, you know, letting, letting your freak flag fly, mm -hmm. you know, just be yourself, live mm -hmm. your life. And that's, you know, the civil liberties, the advancements. And then you think about the, you know, you think about the conservative side of let's balance the checkbook, let's, you know, pay our bills. And these are not extremes. This is not, these are mm -hmm. not fringe positions. Mm -hmm. But America has moved so far either to the right or so far to the left. Mm -hmm. Now, I would hate to be a social conservative right now in the Democratic Party because there's no place for you. Well, I noticed Bernie did. Bernie found that out, didn't he? Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> oh, I don't know. But did you see? Yes. Did you see my letter? He found that out. Then he went back I'll, I'll tell you one, one thing that has Bernie Sanders, yeah. always bothered me. And I've introduced legis I've had intro legislation introduced to deal with this before, and I will yeah. again. It, and that is that the Republicans and Democrats in this state and in most states have a taxpayer-funded primary election mm -hmm. where taxpayers are paying for paying. their candidate selection process. Yeah. Why should Even a they don't affiliated these... voter <laughs> or a Green or a Libertarian have to pay their taxes right. so that the Republicans and Democrats, private organizations, wow. Wow. can select their own candidates? Yeah. Minor parties don't get that subsidy. Yeah. And so they should either have it, have it so everybody gets that subsidy, or more ideally, from a libertarian perspective, Nobody gets that. every party should have to finance and monitor and conduct mm, their own candidate selection process. Mm, mm. Well, hey, that's, that's, that's good news. I mean, that's mm -hmm. good background, if you will, mm -hmm. in terms of getting down back to, the, to that so-called preamble of government of the people, by mm -hmm. the people, and for the people. And right I'll now, tell you, these two parties and equal have, protection of the law. And equal protection of the law. That's a very, very important right. point aspect of it. See, mm -hmm. so okay, that, hey, that's that's good. That's good stuff. So let, let's get back again. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still focusing on September. Mm -hmm. Showing what we can do now. Again, like you said, you've already laid out from the standpoint that it could just be an American citizen, if you will, right. that, that if they pick up the phone, if they pick up the phone, uh, if they say, "Well, are you a Republican?" Uh, should you say no or should you say yes? Do you want to respond? Or they say, you, are you a Democrat? Or, are you, are you Bruce, let me, let me tell you something. This Scott will probably disagree with this, respectfully. I like that. Perhaps. Okay. Um, I honestly don't think there, because our f money is limited and right. the political clout we have is limited, mm -hmm. I honestly don't believe that there is very much that the Libertarian or Green parties and candidates can do to get their candidate in the debate. Mm -hmm. um, what is going, I think the one force, the most powerful force that is in play that can get us into the debates is Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton That's themselves. Right. That's right. Because the more they, um, dis, or, uh, the more they uh, disenchant right. the voters, right. the more they're running to Johnson and Stein. Mm -hmm. And that is what's going. That has been what's made the numbers creep up to 11, exactly. 12, exactly. 13. So I, th I think the only thing that we can do at this point mm -hmm. is hope that for the next three or four weeks, right. that Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump continue 
to again. shoot themselves right. in the foot. Right, right. right this right. is the one thing more than anything else right. we can do. Right. Right. That's going to bring us to 15 points. Right, right. You know, I might I might mention too when you think about that. That's exactly what happened at the front end, because mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders was an independent, <laughs> and he, then he ran. He, in my point, he debated. Yeah. He came in. He ran and, as a Democrat. You know, he ran, but he parties. was an but he, he was actually a socialist. Yeah, a socialist, Democratic a socialist, socialist. Yeah, a socialist. But it was kind of interesting. Then obviously, at the end of the day. Had he stayed on, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about it. It would be a threesome. You understand? I think. Yeah. That, I mean, Bernie. Bernie had a hell of a shot. Yeah. At the whole. Actually, piece. he had a very. He had a one hell of a shot, but yeah. also, you know, he should have been treated with impartiality, yeah. and he wasn't. No, that was. No. And this gets back to. I, I mean, I you cannot. I think part of why people are so. I hear people criticizing Bernie Sanders for not standing up to the Clinton no. um, machinery, and I will only say that I cannot imagine. I personally want to put myself in his shoes. Can you imagine having run your heart out, expect? It, you know, if nothing else, it, only to be treated fairly, and then to find out through the email releases and the the whole Wiki, the uh, WikiLeaks that you really didn't have an even playing field with mm -hmm. the party that you're running with. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people's lives have been destroyed who have seriously oh, yeah. crossed yeah. Okay. the Clinton machine. Yeah. And maybe that was more Again, than Bernie Sanders. No, I think he's. That was I, I won't part. go in that direction. I no, but I won't mm -hmm. go in that direction. I will. I want to relate to a man who, who when I look at him now who's been almost eviscerated. He has been betrayed by the party that was supposed to treat him neutrally, that he was actually looking for just the same assistance and equal treatment in the, par in the process. And I, and I wrote a letter, an open letter to the um, Oregonian. They printed it, and my heart just breaks. Um, as a chaplain, I'm a community chaplain, and I think that the Sanders folks were treated unfairly. I think... Because they were addressing issues. And I, 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 huge I, I, issues, now, this, important this real issues. about what we're talking about. These are issues aspect of it. And uh, but like I said, If a of senator that cannot get fair treatment... Yeah. What about you and I? Well, my point is that that's what we're talking about, <laughs> yeah. you guys. I mean, we're talking about Lifter and Green Party because, again, outsiders, if you will, outsiders, sure. you know what I mean? Third party, right? Uh, he was a socialist. And then he was realistically, he was kind of like a third party person. And the only way he was able to get into debate was to become a Democrat. Democrat. Well, right. they, they, they said, well, he's not going to do anything anyway. You don't, yeah. you don't have people yelling about this. But no, I'll tell you, I think, you're, voice, I, I think you're right, but I think that dynamic is changing. I know that. Yeah. I it's, know it is. It's, it is. And it's changing pretty fast. That's what I'm saying with Bernie. I mean, it, it's changing. Mm -hmm. So now we have an opportunity. And I think, in all due respect, this is not being anti even the, the old system. Mm -hmm. As I say, we need to change. I mean, things have happened. Yeah. Things have, we're a little bit more progressive, if you will. Yeah, and actually, what the numbers are showing us and what's happening, I want to focus. I mean, absolutely, Richard is correct that, that the, the character of the Trump and the Clinton debacle okay. is driving people. Okay. But I would also like to caveat that with maybe that was the original impetus. But now, which caused people to start becoming aware of the third party, the libertarian ticket of of, um, of Johnson party. and mm -hmm. Weld or Stein. And what I want to say is that not only so we are no longer dependent upon this debacle, this train wreck called I call it clump. Okay, Clinton and Trump. We are no longer. Well, um, be, be respectful, you know. Well, it, it, that's yeah, actually what I mean. The Clinton and the Trump campaign. We are no longer dependent upon them shooting in the foot themselves in the foot yeah, right. to get recognition. Right. What we are seeing in the polls is a consistent incremental rise. And now, as people become aware of the quality of the libertarian ticket, mm -hmm. these two governors with tremendous experience, Bill, you know, Bill Weld, oh, yeah. uh, in oh, terms yeah. of in the Reagan Justice Department prosecuting, you know, criminal, uh, um, you know, organized crime, prosecuting mm -hmm. banking corruption, right, right. Um, banking industry. Um, Johnson, with his experience as governor. His his business, his business acumen. So now suddenly we are no longer simply dependent mm -hmm. upon whether people are no longer asking what is it that Trump recently well, said. They're starting to ask what is it that Gary Johnson has <coughs> recently yeah, said, yeah. or and what with, is it that Jill Stein has said. And and with respect to Scott, I th I think that the Johnson and the Stein campaign, I think they are still dependent on on Trump and Hillary oh, yeah. shooting themselves in the oh, foot yeah. to get to oh, fifteen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But if they make it into the debates then they will be independent Absolutely. and they will have the capability of picking up the ball and running themselves. Um, and I hope that, I mean, there are things that the Trump and the Clinton campaign can teach the minor party candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, one is that, in, in my opinion, the people who support Hillary, um, they may believe that Hillary is corrupt, which she is, but they... Many of them are middle class. Many of them have a bit of security. They want to hold on to that security. I think that's the draw to establishment, even if they don't like the establishment. And then on the Trump side, there is a frustration and a fear of a government 
that is becoming so overreaching. Mm-hmm. That so you've authoritarian. Got a, you, you, oh, so authoritarian, even though he's an authoritarian um, in a lot of ways, that they want to kick over the chess board to get a new game set. Mm-hmm. Right. So I would think that um, either the Johnson or the Stein campaign, mm-hmm. uh, once go. they get in the debate, they have to come into contact with these two vibes. Exactly. People want change exactly. and people want reform, exactly. but they also want security. Yes. Right. Or at least a degree of security. Yes. I think yes. people are ready to take some kind of a risk now, yes. Yes. but they do want some base level of security and they want to get control back yeah. over their, their, their own lives. governance. Mm-hmm. Those, th- that's the valuable thing that we can learn from the Trump and the Hillary campaign. And if Stein and Johnson can get into the debates... Yeah. And these campaigns can have a life of their own if they're able to incorporate parts of these exactly. vibes exactly. with their own message. That could be a winning message, and anything could and happen. And that you're yes. actually starting right. to see that. And this is the year as a woman. That's right. Well, well Bruce, no, Bruce, you're starting. Yeah, Bruce, yeah, woman, you're yeah. starting to see the campaign. Oh, yeah, I see it. yeah, I, I know what you're saying. You're starting to see this. You know, G- Governor Johnson has said repeatedly on national television that he st- that these they are not looking to be dictator in chief. That they still have to work with a Congress. They still yeah. have to legislation still has to be presented well, to there. them. I mean, that's, yeah. that's so, their background. So yeah. the point being is yeah. that they are yeah. recognizing some of these concerns that people yeah. have, and they're wanting it to be very clear. This is not simply a radical kicking over the ch- yeah. table. Yeah. Now it is getting a third party to the debate, getting the possibility of a third party presidency. Now that's radical. That is the nation kicking over the, the chessboard yeah. or the, the checkerboard. But yeah. the when, if that checkerboard is kicked over and we see a Governor Johnson as president, Governor Johnson is making it very clear they're not simply going to start radically changing everything simply for the sake of change. Yeah. They want careful analysis. They want bipartisan input. They don't, for example, if it's a libertarian presidential um, campaign, a uh, White House, they're still saying, look, we will take the best and the brightest of the mm-hmm. Democratic Party. We're not going to simply stack the deck now that we're in control. Let's do to them what they've done to us. They'll take the, mm-hmm. bre- the brightest minds in the Republican Party, the brightest minds in the Democratic Party. The, if there are if Jill Stein, if there are pe- aspects of the Jill Stein campaign, in other words, they want to build a coalition. They will drive the initiative. They will set the policies that they mm-hmm. want, but they have to work with a sitting Congress. And they got to listen yeah. to the people. And they will. Yeah. Yeah. They've made that yeah. very well, we clear. But with due respect, this year is so it's a heavy piece. It's so different. So, so different that I don't think this could be called the year of the woman or the year of the man. Correct. This is, if I had to come up with any metaphor, it would be the year of Thunderdome. Mm. You know, the Mad Max movie? That's the problem. Where you put everybody in and there are chainsaws and weapons and only one comes out. You can't ignore the woman. No, 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 you can't ignore actually, anybody. I think the idea of simply voting for someone based on their their gender or based mm-hmm. on their um, p- only because of a single issue. Okay. okay, for example, you have pro-life Republicans, pro- the Blue Dog Democrats, or pro you know the oh, conservative yeah. Democrats. It's so just voting being fair, for somebody is mm-hmm. just, just being fair. I think and voting on a candidate si- over a single issue or over a single act, eh, I think that would be a mistake. And as as Richard is saying, this year is so completely different. I yeah. lay, I call this the year of the American voter. If we yeah. the American voter has has never had such a pristine opportunity to reclaim the system back to themselves. We need that, that's why we need the debate. The, they, we well, need that debate. We need, we need the need debate. That debate in September, like you said, and and if it, you know what I'm saying, if we go through that process and we had these four, the other the, the, the other two entities out there, our system, on the table, that'd be great. I think you're right, but our system is at a very dangerous precipice yes, it is. right now. Yes, it is. One of the first things that they teach you in college and hopefully high school, when you're learning about civics is that for any system to endure, mm-hmm. it must have legitimacy. The people must believe, at least enough people must believe that it represents them yes. so that they put their faith in it. Yeah. I think there are more and more Americans, I'm not a conspiracy theory, I'm not saying there are black helicopters, but I do think there are more and more Americans who do not believe the system is honest. Yeah. They don't, even if they, they may feel disenfranchised, but even if they don't feel disenfranchised, they may feel that the system is corrupt yeah. Yeah. or that it's bought or yeah. that it's paid for. And all this undermines the legitimacy of our system and that tears at the fabric of right. our republic. Right. 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 And, and so. this is a time when Americans need to reclaim right. their power. Yeah. Yes. And that is the only way that we can build back the legitimacy in our right. in our right. base. Right. And hopefully we can we can cease this whole issue of the civil war. Because we in only respect mm-hmm. I can, we'll talk about that later at another mm-hmm. point. But we are right in the midst of another civil war. 
I think Thanks that I don't respect. know if I'd call it a civil no, war, no, but no, no due respect. The, definitely the race civil, issue. The race issue is, yeah. is a very dominant piece right now, and, it's and a that's big a big piece. Major, well, major that's concern. where you look at Gary Johnson. Is a constitution? You talked earlier that's about why I judges. Said we'll talk a little bit more about mm -hmm. that. You talked we need to, to talk more. About you talked about the significance mm -hmm. of this cycle in terms of Supreme Court justices. You know, one of the, what Gary Johnson is. They are um, Johnson is a constitutionalist. He's a pragma pragmatist. You look at his history in New Mexico. There is nothing in his history that would cause should cause anybody to have alarm over the type of judges that he will appoint. Mm -hmm. They He will appoint judges that have a consistent constitutional view, which gets us back to the Bill of Rights, gets us back to our founding documents, and at that point, yeah. now we can start talking about the inclusive, yep. the inclusion of all these different yeah. minorities and people who have been disenfranchised yep. from the American dream. I, I know we're at, all, I, I know all we're Americans. At, There's no such thing all as Americans. Yeah, that's no, right. no minorities. The, the, well, I mean, the Americans. More, all Americans. We are all that's Americans, but certain people, certain demographics have not had the same experience yeah. of the American experience, the American mm. dream. Mm. Gets back to Martin Luther King Jr. The idea that a check has been written, the insufficient funds, and you're not. And the way you're going to address that is getting back to the Constitution, back to the Bill of Rights, back to the Declaration of yeah. Independence, and that is for all Americans. Well, next time to we'll video. We'll video at this yep. time. I know we're almost out of time, so Look, I want to. I yes. want to encourage people to come to the Libertarian Party of Oregon website, okay. Okay. lporegon.net. Sounds great. And uh, I know that Gary Johnson has a website too. Okay. Well, I think go to johnsonweld.com or and okay. then on johnsonweld.com and then also Oregon for Gary Johnson. Okay. Y'all, I'm we, making. We, we, we gotta get. We gotta get going. And but okay. you're gonna be back here. You're gonna be back anyway. Okay. We're gonna really get into this debate aspect. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you Bruce. very much. Hey, look here. Okay. I'll see you. Hey, look here. We're gonna be having another half hour here, and then we'll get back our guests. We're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back with you. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Again, folks, welcome again to Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, and as we're going to do, as, as I said before, we're going to inform you and educate you. we got a big day coming up. we got the big debate. we got the presidential campaign campaign after that. I, I'm saying after that because we got to make sure we get the, the real the real debate, I mean the real candidate, the candidates, if you will. And so with that, I'm just continuing on. We just had, uh, we just talked a little bit about, uh, about uh, the, the Libertarian Party, and we talked about some of the pluses and minuses, how do you access and this, that, and the other, and talk a little bit about what you should do, if you will, in this upcoming uh, September debate and supporting it and whatever. So please, for those of you who haven't watched it, uh, the first half uh, may check it out, okay? But now we're going to continue on. We, we've got uh, with us the, now the Pacific Green Party of Oregon, Emma Lugo. Right, Emma, mm -hmm. right, Emma Lugo, the Green Party person, and then we got Scott here back here at the table. We, and we got again, like I said, you remember I made that point. It's, it's the year of the woman. That was all about. I mean, we got we got to get that female. We got to have that lady, that woman, sitting on that stage with these other three guys. Fair. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's why we got Emma. Mm -hmm. yeah, we hey we we're right in line here in Oregon, right? right Emma? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, Emma, why don't you spend a couple of minutes and tell us a little bit about the Green Party? Sure. The Green Party, um, our candidate for president this year is Dr. Jill Stein. And Dr. Stein is a fierce advocate for the environment. Okay. Um, she, is, she went to the Paris Global 
uh, climate change summit uh, this winter and was, um, you know, a speaker at the summit. And she's been a really passionate organizer. Mm -hmm. And our climate is in a period of like severe crisis right now. It's very clear that global warming is real and it's something that's affecting, it's going to affect our future, our mm -hmm. children's future. And if we don't make changes right now in how we uh, consume energy, how we consume goods and services, mm -hmm. um, in our policies uh, in the Middle East with our wars over oil, and um, you know, with how we treat our forests and our planet, that we're you know heading down a path that uh, is going to be very difficult for the future. And Dr. Jill Stein is the best advocate for that. Wow. Um, she's a feminist. Wow. She's yes. a doctor. Yes. Um, you know, she's anti-racist. Mm -hmm. So she's uh, her her presidential her vice presidential candidate is um, uh, someone who's really outspoken on issues of race and social justice. Mm -hmm. And um, she's uh, you know. Uh, pro Palestinian. She's mm. she's not. Uh, she's anti-Israeli. She speaks out on issues of human rights mm -hmm. globally. Mm -hmm. And um, here in the United States, uh, we're building right now. We're working towards getting that five percent. Mm -hmm. And um, here in Oregon, of course, Dr. Stein is very popular, oh, okay. and a lot of people who are supporting Bernie are now supporting Jill. Oh, so fantastic. we're just really excited to have her on the ballot. Um, you know, we we just got her on the voters pamphlet here in Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, she's going to be on the ballot again for a second term and um, we're also working uh, in conjunction with the Libertarian Party to get Jill into the presidential debates because yes. we believe that you know Americans have a right to hear all yes. voices yes they mm -hmm. have a right to hear uh, Dr. Stein they yes. have a right to hear Mr. Johnson they have a right to hear Mr. Trump and and also uh, Secretary Clinton that's right that's right See, that's, that's really neat I like that mm -hmm. that's really good and like I said anything we can do and I'm sure we're gonna have you guys on as often as we possibly can. In fact, if Dr. If, if Dr. Stein comes to town, we'll bring yeah, her on the show. Yeah, we just, we had her here in January. She was speaking okay. over at the Peace House okay. about the, uh, about Paris and what happened, okay. what's going on with global warming right now, what's happening with like international agreements mm -hmm. on, on the environment. And uh, so, yeah, she was just here talking yeah. about that. Okay. And uh, we'll probably, we'll try to get her back, uh, you know, this election cycle. Cool, cool. So, well, this is PCM, you know, it's the people's show. Yeah. You know, and that's very important, getting the, getting but the we really involved. want is we want to see Dr. Stein uh, on stage at the yes. four presidential debates oh, that's it. with Gary Johnson yes, 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 and yes, also yes. with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. So what are you guys doing? Is that, that's one of the reasons why we, we're here. What are some of the things that you're doing? In order oh my gosh, to, we're doing so much. Are you educating some folks oh my gosh, about what to so do? Much. And we're doing... Pick up the phone? And, yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. We're okay. registering voters. We're getting people to switch over to the Green Party because there's still plenty of time to do that. Mm -hmm. We're having meetups. Our next meetup is this Thursday at the Belmont Library at 6 p.m. It's our Stein 2016 meetup. Mm -hmm. We just have had our second nominating convention mm, here good. in Portland, and so we um, had a bunch of people in who That's were seeking. Promo. That's good promo. Yes, too. we were just uh, seeking our second. We had our first nominating convention back okay. in May. Okay. So, um, you know, we're doing everything that we can to push Stein. We have. Uh, you know our Stein, uh, Oregon for Stein Facebook page, mm -hmm. and uh, we're Great. you know we're we're just getting the word out. We're passing out literature. Great. We're Great. registering voters. Awesome. Um, we're very active here in Oregon. Awesome. awesome, awesome. You know when I think about that also too, I'm just thinking about these little extra things about the, the, between the two of you, both Libertarian Party and the Pacific Green Party. You know I think we ought to reach out to, to actually those, some very similar elected, concerns. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. but listening I'm, but I'm to thinking, the but things. I'm, but I think the point I want to make is that I want to, I think we should reach out to our elected congressmen and whatever. Why not? A lot of them are very upset and disappointed about what's happening and whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, and say, hey, look, uh, what can I do? Part of the issue, though, is that they're vested, they have vest they are vested in the machinery that has got them into power. And it becomes very difficult to go against that machinery, go you know, against their own party to speak on certain issues. Like, there are common issues that were brought up here. You know, Gary Johnson was not present at the Paris Agreement, but actually signed it. He's on that list of rosters of signatures endorsing it. Mm -hmm. um, and environmental issues, now we come at a different approach. For example, Johnson would love to see this whole, we're seeing the green renewable energies moving in. We're seeing opportunity that, that finally that, that is emerging as viable technology, viable innovation. But we're so locked into crony capitalism, the the, the wood pro quo of, of these older industries, the fossil fuel industry. So it becomes very hard to move forward on renewables, whether it's solar or whether or not it's wind. Of course, wind is another form of solar energy. But the point being is that there are these alternative environmental environmental issues that we could address, but because of a crony capitalism as opposed to a free market, there's so oftentimes people confuse free market capitalism with crony capitalism where we have different favors. I, you know, Arco, Standard 
oil company from 1920 moving forward has been around forever. All the bills, all the legislation, all the backroom deals, which are favoring basically a fossil fuel industry, which we we now know we don't have to use fossil fuels. Now, right, and we can all ride our bikes just like we do here in Portland. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> There's yeah. much that we can do. Um, commuter uh, commuter trains. Look at the light rail that's taking place here. You know, Seattle has it now. Portland, I see the trolley car coming here, driving in here this today. Mm -hmm. So there are similar concerns. And also in terms of how we do zoning, if we make mm -hmm. our cities more compact, mm -hmm. if we make uh, tra public transportation more accessible, if we create more bike lanes, Portland is really a very green city already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about John? Now, let's talk about the. But you know, we got uh, We have well, to eat now. We Jill, have to eat. Jobs? Jill has her Green okay. New Deal. Talk to me. And she's talk been traveling all around the country right. talking about, about the Green New Deal. So let's talk about it. The Green New Deal is basically look. We need a whole new domestic infrastructure that's based on renewable energy, mm -hmm. that's based on renewable resources, and that's really based on like looking at the future rather than looking at the past. Mm -hmm. We can like create so many more jobs in manufacturing mm -hmm. for solar, for wind, for recyclables. And this, this Green New Deal is really about reinvesting in America. And by doing it in a way that takes away from the fossil fuel industry mm -hmm. and puts it into renewable resources. Mm -hmm. well, and that gets into job creation, yeah. you know, for example. That's a huge part of job yeah. creation. Job yeah. creation. Yeah. Um, and then also that entrepreneurial spirit, which has been really so often... You know, it's been really stifled, and we do it through t the way that things are taxed or the way in which we view certain industries, making it difficult, creating obstacles to advancing mm -hmm. on the newer industries. Mm -hmm. So if you job creation, now you can talk about... Um, I can just speak about Johnson, and maybe Oregon people may or may not agree with this, but he's... You know, the idea that giving somebody... Why do you have to have all this... Um, I was just, just got my hair cut two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, and the barber cutting my hair, just he just had a, a double. A, a, his monthly, his yearly fees doubled from $150 a year to $300 a year just to have permission by the state to cut hair. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we talk about, for example, the Uber or Lyft. Now people can say, well, gee, that's competing against established taxi companies. Mm -hmm. At the same token, it's causing people who are able to have an initiative to create their own job to mm -hmm. now they are either they have a company of their own and they're now they're eligible they may be a you know maybe a small motor repair shop or it mm -hmm. could be a, a barber but now they're able to reap the tax benefits of being able to write off certain expenses that once you have your own business you can do so it's capturing that entrepreneurial spirit we see it with the deregulation of the um, oh of the microbrew industry that took place in the late 70s early 80s the deregulation of the of the brewing industry so now you can go to Portland and we have all these phenomenal yeah. little brew yeah. shops and these different beers and ales that could never have taken place without the deregulation. So there's two ways that you can go about doing this. And when I talk about deregulation, I'm talking about a responsible look at what's happening. For example, Johnson does not want to do with the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. There are certain industries or there are certain effects that can be experienced that we all have too much to lose and that the entity is too large for one okay. individual to go against. Okay. And so you want to have a regulatory agency like the EPA protecting mm -hmm. us. Now there are other agencies or other aspects which we don't need that. And so um, for example, now we can talk about Lyft, we can talk about Uber, um, we could talk about the trucking industry that's being radical. But let's talk about TPP. Where are we on trade? The, the How do you guys Green react Party, to this? Okay, the Green Party is opposed to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Okay. And uh, most of our candidates speak out consistently against the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We're really upset here in Oregon with Senator Ron Wyden mm -hmm. for supporting the TPP, mm -hmm. and that's been one of the biggest motivating factors in the race this year here in Oregon. Okay. The Trans-Pacific Partnership is going to uh, hurt uh, Oregonians, mm -hmm. and it's going to you know benefit large multinational corporations mm -hmm. through a process of free trade, mm -hmm. which is going to drive down wages for workers mm -hmm. across the Pacific Rim mm -hmm. while just emboldening corporations and also allowing corporations to create secret backroom deals mm -hmm. that aren't regulated by government. And actually, if people try to sue to challenge things that happen in their communities, mm -hmm. there are secret courts and secret tribunals that make these decisions mm -hmm. that affect their lives, their livelihood, when you talk about small businesses. Yeah. This is one of the reasons that we're opposed to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Yeah, whereas in contradistinction, um, the Johnson Weld ticket is really the, it's really sad this day in America that the Johnson Weld ticket is the only free market, free trade 
camp ticket out there. Um, and we have a different view of the TPP. It certainly have, um, Johnson has been very clear that our caveats. How's that? How's that? Well, there are some different, he, the caveat is where it's, we need to, there, it's a huge document. And he, um, now the, Ronald Reagan had the Heritage Foundation. That was kind of his think tank ideas, which he could bounce things from or, or rally, you know, competitive ideas. Um, but he still set the agenda of what he wanted to implement, even though the Heritage Foundation may say, we recommend X, Y, Z. To that same, in that same way, Gary Johnson relies on the case. Cato Institute. The Cato Institute is a policy think tank that makes recommendations or looks at certain issues, and Johnson takes some of his advice or cues looking at um, different legislation or different policies based on the Cato Institute. So the Cato in Institute has endorsed the TPP, and it has done so for several reasons. Now, for the Johnson doesn't necessarily embrace all the same reasons that the Cato Institute has endorsed it, but what he recognizes is that this becomes a form of soft diplomacy. Soft diplomacy yeah. with issues like the countries like China to reduce, to remove us from an adversarial relationship into more of a competitive community working together for common causes, common interests. Um, the idea of... But how does that read with just blue collar stuff? How does that read? I mean, okay, I'm let's look at Seattle and Portland. Job, let's look at Seattle job. and Portland. Real quick, yeah. Pacific, these are Pacific Rim nations. And the, it is it is a anywhere from a 24 to a 72 hour reduction in transit time for, to ship something to Seattle or to Portland than it does to ship it to California. And so if we have a, a TPP in place, it opens up our ports for a higher level of trade, a higher, higher level of um, inventory coming in through our ports, which of course stimulates our economies, our, our, our Seattle, Washington economy, or our Portland, Oregon economy. What about those but foreign corporations? But the TPP, what about, yeah. the TPP hurts stock workers here yeah, in, as, as in well. Portland. It hurts well, then that's a matter of unionization, which are private or, Unions are private unions organizations. Unions are great. Unions are great for this country. They're great for workers. Right. See, and the Green Party supports the rights of unions. And actually, the Libertarian Party, which oftentimes is seen as being against um, um, unions. Actually, the Libertarian Party is very much in favor of private asso free association. And if people want to freely com come together, combine together to to take on um, quality of work issues, um, standard issue, you know, standard of, of, of pay issues, that they do that. And we need that. That's been very helpful in our in our history. Um, the problem is, is when these organizations become now the entrenched establishment, and so they want to fight out, for example, fight an Uber driver because they've gotten theirs 20 years ago they fought hard they rallied now we have ours and we don't want them to have theirs i don't think that the green party has a particular yeah. position on uber i think you no know, i'm using that green as an party example people probably use uber yeah, yeah they see, do see, the you point, know we have so much in common yeah, very yeah, much yeah. So. but the point the point i want to bring to the table again like i said uh, is that uh, i'm talking about the, the furnishing the, the furniture building and stuff like that and, mm -hmm. uh, taking our timber and going to china and to have they, it milled they, or processed they, they in China. They cut up over there, and then oh. they send the they send the parts back. It's, it's one of the deal. My point is that well, you know, here in Oregon, blue we feel blue collar. Here in Jesus, Oregon, God, we, the Green Party, we feel very strongly about our forests. Yeah. We feel like it's important to protect our right, forests. Right. That's why we don't support further privatization of okay, forests. Yes, for instance, yes. we just nominated a candidate who's, um, you know, for saving the Elliott State Forest, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we think that in Oregon that our forests aren't just a crop that mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. harvest. We mm -hmm. see our forest as part of an ecosystem. Okay. We know that when we harvest trees, it affects the salmon, and the salmon runs affect, you know, all, they, they affect marine life, and we know mm -hmm. that pollution of the water affects the uh, affects the marine life. Yeah, we understand yeah, yeah. that when we harvest timber, we're actually hurting our entire ecosystem. Mm -hmm, we're mm -hmm. taking away from the carbon reserve, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is a huge issue in the future. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if forestry is, it's, it's, if, if you well, talk forest, about saving jobs, let's yeah. talk about saving jobs seven generations there from you go. now. There you go. But like I said, I'm just making the point is that that's one of the major things we have in now. We've got, we've got homeless problems. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of major problem aspect of it. And a lot of folks don't have jobs. Housing is a human right. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Housing but, is a but, human you know what I'm right. Saying? You know, our families, you know, are just deteriorating because you of know, all and part of the reason there. is because the ven the avenue of opportunity has been obstructed. So many people would like they either they've been beaten down or the system has made it very complicated. It's intimidating. You talk to somebody about wanting to form their own corporation. We think corporations are evil. Many mom and pop people are actually corporations. They're LLCs, except Oregon doesn't really recognize the LLC for tax purposes. But the idea that mom and pops can be corporations and reap the benefits of incorporating the problem is is that it's but very then on the other side, there's the perspective that corporations are people.
people, mm-hmm. which I do not agree. Have <laughs> right, right, that right. You know, they're... supersede the right of actual living, breathing human, human beings. Right. Well, that, Actually, well, we have so much in common. Yeah, yeah. We should see, really. See, we, the, we're already letting the Democrats and the Republicans split right, us. Right, right. Oh, I'm not splitting. I and, think, and we're here because we're on the margins, and we want to get into the debates. <laughs> and we both have that in common. We have so many things in common. And the point Let's is, talk is, about what we have in common. Well, in common, I, I have a bachelor's of science in environmental studies. Okay, my father was actually the CEO of Champion Paper Company, in Columbia Cellulose. Um, that's and the idea, and absolutely right. So when we have different for we have you, we have there are. No no, um, old growth for the old growth forests that we have now need to be protected as old growth forests. We have new growth forests, which also will have an impact where it's viewed simply as a crop and raising and, and you're harvesting pulp and paper from these things. But at the same token, that does a lot of jobs, have, a lot of jobs. that it could be jobs in that, but it can also impact the yeah, environment. Job, yeah. I would like to point to another aspect of deregulation, which we are both socially agreed upon, or that the whole marijuana industry, the whole hemp industry, the cannabis industry, both the Greens and the Libertarians are yeah. on board with that. Can you you believe that the federal government just ruled again well, that, yeah. against marijuana at the same time <laughs> that the Oregon State Fair is having a show at this very moment, you know, showing that marijuana right. is a crop, cannabis is a crop, and it can be, it's a plant. And not just a well, medicinal ever seen well, That's it, why you need the discussion. Plant. That's why right. the discussion Just like a dandelion so j- or a Emma. tree or a right, flower, right, it's right. a plant. Emma, mm-hmm. right? Emma brought up mm-hmm. the greatest point here. Okay, um, Barack Obama just allowed, he just looked at, p- commuted people's sentences, didn't absolve them, didn't pardon them. I know you don't want to commuted, say Actually, this is about a valid, him, this is a great you. example. No, thank you for He that. commuted right. the sentences right. of people See. who had been, who were in jail because of criminalization of marijuana, right. not for violent crimes. So think about this, cri- the whole criminal Which justice majority system. majority of people in the criminal yeah. justice system. Yeah. Are, and this is in common. Mm-hmm. So the point is, while that, while and Barack Obama... You. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are, are not going to talk about this issue. They're not. They are not at all. But the point is, is while he's commuting the sentences of people who've been incarcerated over marijuana cr- cr- criminalization, at the same time, the FDA is making sure that the criminalization platform still stands, mm-hmm. which to me makes no sense. Um, one of well, the things I, that Johnson well, has... I'll make, I'll make a point that I'm very familiar with that issue with reference to the, well, the, 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 commu- the, the sentence of, uh, of young blacks Mm-hmm. Because the Clintons were the ones that, that threw them under the bus to begin with. Mm-hmm. This goes and, back and, to and the point, um, Nixon. And, and the point I'm making is that you know you can commute someone. Okay, you you, you let them out, but at the same time, where are they going to work? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now like they same, have a criminal it's, it's record. As if to say, okay, fine. Then why don't you create some jobs mm-hmm. for them right. before they get out? Mm-hmm. And, it, and all due respect, we got well, the marijuana we industry have, aspect of so it. So here in maybe Oregon, we get them involved. Well, part we of the have, job creation is dealing with the national debt. Part of in Oregon, we have the we support ban the box. Yeah. Okay. Ban the box is like so important, and we also support reforming Measure 11. Okay. Because yeah, Measure that's a, 11 that's a heavy is, piece, yes. is like destroying so that's, many that's young a, lives in this t- country. Exactly. And ban the box is like it. just essential because once you've done your time, you did your time. That's right. And when you're back out in that's the community, right. that's right. that's you have right. economic rights. That's right. You have mm-hmm. a right to try to get a job. That's right. You have a right to try to compete. And as a libertarian, I'm sure you agree that a person who's done their time oh, the civil and comes back into society should be restored. Should be able to like try to get a job yes. and compete yeah. and yeah. succeed. And that, 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 that really absolutely. The, that well, that's really, when you're talking about yeah, civil yeah. rights. I don't. I mean, the idea of restoring once someone has done their time and paid their penalty to society, why are we withholding from them the rights that we say that, that they've lost? Once you've done your time, the whole idea is that you should be reinstituted as a law-abiding citizen. You want to break those the, that agreement again, and then you'll face the consequences again. But when you're released, suddenly you now you're out in the public and you're trying to get a job, but you can't. You got a criminal record. You can't because you now you have that your time is you're competing about your time for work by having to go to through parole meetings or by um, right. ankle bracelets. Mm-hmm. And those are all obstacles. You know, who wants to show up to work with an ankle bracelet? Now, I'm not saying that ankle bracelets are wrong. What I'm trying to say is that these are, most people don't think of the obstacles. If you don't have a house and you don't have a telephone, where do you, how do you start working for, looking for a job? Mm-hmm. How do you have the appearance, the clothing, the computer access, the skills? And so that, that though, depends upon a thriving economy. We need to look at that whole set. Well, the we U.S. Really economy do. grew, what, 1% in the last six months? Yeah, and John, if you look at the Johnson, if you look at Gary Johnson's statements on the national debt, he that we are the only ticket that's seriously looking. We are twenty trillion dollars in debt, national debt. If the if we if China wants to come and claim back the monies owed to them, the IMF will say, "Yep, you owe these monies. We want you need to pay this out." So it's we have to be so careful because the idea is to ta- to use taxes to support some of these other programs. 
but without taking into consideration how does this impact the overall scene of the national economy. Now Johnson wants to cut 20% across the board and everyone goes, oh, well let's just take the military. The, the Pentagon itself saying that there is a 20% cushion right now. We could start closing bases and start doing, taking a 20% yeah, we, we, cut. We are, in all due respect, we're we in can, a sort of a push to, we yeah. push the button uh, era now. Well the Pentagon is, well, the Pentagon <laughs> is stating yeah, we are in the, when you see the way that the, the, again, the rhetoric again. is escalating up, oh my gosh, the things that Donald Trump has said, or even Clinton, there's no difference, we, the Greens are agreed on this, why are we still wanting to start, send boots on the ground and start more wars? We don't have a congressional authorization to be in Afghanistan or in Syria or to fly these drones. Again, if we're going to do these activities, which can be our right as a nation to do it, let's have Congress weigh in and make a declaration of war. Let's have Congress reassess. Um, and so Johnson is not, and again, the Greens, they're saying, look, Regime change has not worked. Finding a dictator we don't like and toppling them and putting in someone else we do like has not worked. Let's reassess this issue. And the Greens, right? I would. Jill Stein is exactly on board with that, as far as I understand. I would think that you know, in Portland, a city that like organized uh, hugely against the wars in Iraq mm -hmm. and Afghanistan. Uh, you know, we are a peace party. We're a party about yes. peace. Mm -hmm. We're a party about dismantling mm -hmm. oppression. We're a party. Uh, you know, just to get back to this issue of quick, restoring the that, rights yeah. of felons, um, you know, one thing that I just want, uh, last thing I, I yeah, just want to say, better. Hillary Clinton's vice presidential, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not Hillary. Trump. Uh, yeah, no, anyways, the point is that we need to really look at Black Lives Matter. Right. Dr. Stein's vice presidential candidate is Baraka, who is like an outspoken advocate who's got deep roots in the African-American community and has been working on restoring, uh, restoring the rights of African Americans who have been unjustly imprisoned, yeah. and, and, and the Johnson Well ticket is, is strong, staunchly, yeah. okay. you know, they're kind of staunchly real, real civil, quick, right. civil the civil liberties aspect of this. Okay, we'll do this. I've got about, about one more minute. We'll need to come back. Each, wait, one each back. of you identify how the, how they can contact each of the parties. Oh sure, um, Dr. Dr. Jill Stein is the. Uh, Jill, uh, Jill Stein 2016. Uh, you can also Google Dr. Stein, okay. uh, Pacific Green Party, okay. specificgreens.org. Okay, real quick. Right. Um, Gary jo uh, Oregon for Gary Johnson on Facebook. Also, um, johnsonweld.com. But the, the bottom line of all of this is that look at Bill Weld, who is fired oh, we got about by seconds. Jesse real Helms. Yeah. He was too advanced. He was fighting for le the lesbian, gay, ge transgendered community rights, civil rights. He was fighting for the marijuana industry. This is 25 years ago. We don't have to add this to our plan. Get, get us, get us, get us both into the debate. Yes, get, get us, get us in, in the debate. debate. But, but, in the debate. Real quick, mm -hmm. like, and that's basically folks who are out there viewing on. That's why I'm saying we need to get that. We need to get that debate on mm -hmm. September. When someone that's calls, say you want to see Jill. You don't know a lot of things, and you will know. Exactly. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Exactly. All right, Somebody folks. calls. We want All to right, say, folks, Jill you get it. I will, I will, the Johnson. Oregon Voters Digest will be right up front. We're going to make sure you, if you pick up that phone, make sure you answer. Okay? Take care. Bye. Have a good one. See you next week.